Welcome to another Sketch and Car tutorial. Today we will be building this stone bridge as a part of a two-part series where we'll be creating this scene. Let's start by pressing K to activate the add-on. Select Smart Join. Click Blank Start and give it a name. I will call mine Stone Bridge. Press OK to enter the new name and press Enter to activate the add-on. At this point, if you move the camera, the menu might disappear. If that happens, simply press K again. If you're not already in front view, press Alt 1 to switch to front view. We will start by drawing the profile of the bridge. By default, we are in grease pencil draw mode. Outline the bridge using the default brush. You can use all available grease pencil tools. If you make a mistake, simply erase the lines or start from scratch if necessary. Draw all the stones as I'm doing here, one by one. Once you're done drawing, press K to activate the add-on. This will convert all your strokes into mesh. If it looks like a mess, don't worry about it. Simply press the sketchy button and turn on internal edges. If you need to modify your strokes, simply press mute. Make the changes you need to make. In my case here, I forgot to draw some of the stones. And when you're done, click mute again. This will update the mesh with the changes you just made. By default, there is 0.1 Blender units extrusion is applied to your mesh. If your object is not solid, as in here, meaning it looks like it's made of two separate planes, simply modify the simplification until you get a solid shape. Next, turn on inset. Select gap. This will create spaces between stones. Adjust the inset value to increase or decrease the gap space. Next, increase the extrusion until it looks like a solid stone wall. Let's also move the wall a bit to one side so that we can mirror it to the other side as well. If you find any pinching or bad geometry, you can fix it by simply adjusting the simplification. So far this looks good, so let's press K to set it. Next we will create the floor of the bridge. Press K again and click blank start. Give it a new name. I'm going to call mine Stone Pavement. Press OK when done. Make sure the canvas and the 3D cursor are at the center of the world. Press Alt Numpad 7 for the top view. And just like last time, let's draw the floor stones. When you're finished drawing, press K. Adjust the placement of the stones if you like, although we will not be using this particular copy. Enable inset again. The last settings should be fine. Adjust the extrusion length to something sensible. When you're happy with it, press K to set it. Press V to switch to object mode and select the pavement. Move it to the side. We will not be using it directly. Select the original bridge again and press K to activate the add-on. Press Alt Numpad 1 for the front view. Now, the next stroke we will draw, we will use it as a path. Switch to camera view. Draw a shape like so, loosely following the base of the bridge. Press K to generate the mesh and also reset the settings. Make sure to activate Smart Join. Click the button labeled Mesh and select the stone payment object we just created. Activate Curve Deform, expand the options and select Stretch. This will fit the object perfectly on the deforming curve. At this point you could also use Array to multiply the number of stones we have, but uh, because I didn't plan the drawing that way, uh, the two ends of the bricks or stones don't really line up, so in this case I can't but also I don't really need to. Next, place the cursor on the wall of the bridge. Also, let's reset the settings. Click Smart Switch as usual. Turn on the Mirror modifier and enable Mirror Base. Expand the Mirror panel and select the correct axis to mirror the wall. In my case, it's the Y axis. But uh, I don't want to mirror everything. Click on the button that says All and from the drop-down menu, select the material option. Material is the same as the lose part option, except all the parts that share the same material gets affected. 
So for example here, all the bricks that share the same brownish material gets mirrored, but the pavement section of the bridge that has a pinkish color does not. Right about here, I realized that the walls of the bridge are a bit too thick. So in order to make them a little thinner, place the cursor on one of the bricks of the wall and select main transform and choose base. Change the pivot to individual origins and scale in Y a tad. Now, I don't want to scale the floor of the bridge. In order to isolate the walls, just like last time, from the drop-down menu, let's select the material option. This will limit the changes to only the brown bricks that we have the cursor set on. Tweak the scale until you're happy with the thickness of the wall. And when done, press K to set it. Here, looking at the floor of the bridge, I'm realizing that I need to lift the middle section up a bit more. The easiest way to do that is place the 3D cursor on the floor of the bridge, switch to object mode and select the bridge again. Press shift Control, right click to activate the separate loose part. And like before, select the material option. This will separate all the pinkly colored areas, which is the base of the bridge. Select the newly separated bridge base and press K. Also, Alt right click and select the cursor to world center. Make sure that you're in the front view and switch to camera view. Turn on the X-ray so we can see the floor object. We are going to deform the floor object using the cage modifier. So to do that, draw a shape that encompass the entire thing, like so I'm doing here. When done, press K. In order to convert this shape into a cage, press the cage button. Turn on flat option. Enable symmetry. Increase the extrusion to make sure that the entire object is included. Since we are only deforming the bridge base, we only need to include the midsection, the pink stones. Turn on even spacing and increase simplification. We only need enough geometry to deform the object. To activate the cage, press Bind. This will automatically put us into the object mode. Select the cage object and switch to edit mode. Turn on X-ray so we can also select the back facing vertices. Select a few points, enable proportional editing and move the selected points up or down a bit to your liking uh, while adjusting the range using middle mouse button. When done, switch back to the object mode. Select the bridge floor object and press K and click apply cage. Now the changes we made are permanent. Press K again and let's start a new object. Name it bridge bottom. Then press OK to confirm the name. Press K again. Switch to camera view and reset the settings and remember to enable Smart Join. Turn on X-Ray again. Just like we did with the bridge floor, we are going to create the bottom side of the bridge. So let's draw a path shape just like this. Click Mesh button and choose Stone Payment object we created at the beginning. Like before, activate Curve Reform, expand the options and select Stretch. If you need to make some adjustments to the placement of the stones, expand the Curve Transform menu and give it a little offset in the correct axis. In this case, it happens to be Z axis. When happy with the results, press K to set it. Switch to Object Mode and select the bridge floor object we created originally. Let's give these stones a bit more stone-like look. Press K and reset the settings and activate the Smart Join button. Enable the subdivision modifier and select base. Turn on crease and adjust the crease value a tad until you get a nice roundish shape. This naturally will shrink the stones a bit. In order to compensate that, turn on main transforms 
select base and change the pivot to individual origins. In the scale section, click the chain icon to lock the proportions. This way we can control all three axes all at once. Increase the value a tad until all the stones are nicely tucked in together. Also increase the subdivision steps if needed. Again, when you're happy, press K to set it. Let's do the same with the bridge walls. Switch to object mode, select the main bridge object and press K. Although the settings are still the same, all the base buttons have been automatically turned off. So let's re-enable them again, including the main transforms, of course, and adjust the scale if need be. The wall seems to look better with fewer subdivisions, so I set it back to one. Switch to object mode. Let's repeat the same with the bottom part of the bridge as well. Select the bridge button and press K. Again, enable all the base buttons. Like before, adjust the scale if needed. Press K to set it. And this is the end of part one. In the next video, we will create a creek underneath the bridge and a road sign. I will also reveal which add-on I use to create all this <coughs> wear and tear. Thanks for watching. See you next time.